Cambridge University Press is the oldest continuous printer and publisher in the world. The longevity of the archive is particularly important in this respect. And the advantage of having the Press Archive here for researchers in the Cambridge University Library is that we have the rare books room and the resources of the University Library. The variety of material also is just huge, particularly working for an archive. There's that huge range between meeting minutes to important rare published volumes to glass negatives to rolled up ballot papers. Such a huge range of object and material types that can come across your bench that make sure no day is, is typical. We have minutes of the meetings of the Press Syndicate going back to 1696. We have hundreds of volumes of accounting records. But in addition, we have photographs dating back to the late 19th century, plans of our buildings, and particularly important to researchers are the author correspondence files dating back to the late 19th century. So we have about 27,000 author files but for each individual, we may have hundreds of single sheets. So although we have 27,000 named items, we have tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of sheets of paper to be conserved and listed. Within the strong rooms, we have uh, secure storage and we make sure that we have a very carefully preserved environment. So we monitor the temperature, the relative humidity and the light, and then the documents can be brought from that controlled environment out here into the reading room. The Press Archivist and the Press Conservator work very closely together because we're really the interface between the records which are securely preserved in strong rooms and the publicly accessible reading rooms. The difference or similarity between a conservator and an archivist I think comes down to the fact that we're always working towards the same goal, which is access of the collection. A conservator is primarily, we, we initially look at the material aspect of an item and whether or not it can be physically accessed. An archivist is perhaps possibly more concerned with that initial, can you find this item and then we say but can you can you hold it can you open it um, can you read it one of the joys of the press archive is that it has treasures you sometimes have to look quite closely at them i sometimes think that the illustration on the letters patent is a good example of that it's not brightly illuminated but you look at it and you see the delicacy and the information that it contains the letters patent of 1534 are secured by the university on behalf of the Cambridge stationers for a very specific purpose. 50 years previously, an act of parliament had been passed which regulated the business and commerce of any tradesmen who were non, not English born, but who were conducting business within this country, but with one important exemption, and that was printers. An act earlier in 1534, however, had removed that exemption by making it illegal for alien stationers to import books from abroad that had been bound overseas or to sell books at retail. So what the letters patent did was renewed the exemption from those regulations for the stationers in Cambridge. Since the letters patent of 1534, the university had authorised the licensing of printers. It was Richard Bentley's vision that the press should employ a university printer, that the press should have its own buildings and its own type. So Richard Bentley wrote a proposal that he called the design of the press whereby he suggested a small body of university members would advise the printer on his publishing decisions. We have articles for our first university printer, Thomas Thomas, which is an object of great beauty if you look at it carefully for the script and the seal. It's been very carefully preserved and also the first syndicate minute book of 1696, which really begins our history of recorded memory, which is what an archive essentially is. 
As a conservator, part of your role is understanding the significance of everything that you work on, but also understanding that the significance of an object now is not necessarily what its significance will be in 200, 300 years. As conservators, it's important for us not to, to understand the significance, but not to assign a ranking of, of value to anything that we work on. Everything is important.